Hello there, and welcome to Getting Started with Unity. Uh, this course was created for the students at Saturday Academy. My name is Will Patillo. I am the instructor for this course. And many of the other videos that I have created on this channel have been very code-focused and with the intent of trying to build things from scratch. Uh, this series is going to be a little bit different. Uh, my focus is going to be on trying to prototype quickly and make use of a lot of Unity's built-in features. Uh, so right here you can see a terrain and trees and uh, character controllers all built in. Uh, at this point it's almost zero code, uh, just one little tweak that I made that wasn't actually even really necessary. This is all just going to be done uh, using pre-built assets and things that you can get uh, just in through the Unity editor view. So let's get started. Create a new project. So uh, going in through Unity Hub, click New, Unity Prototype. All right, and I'm going to set my version to 2019.1. It's nice and stable and recent. Create a project. Okay, and once that's finished, we have our empty scene right here. Now, before anything else, I'm just going to bring in some things. I'm go on to the asset store and bring in the standard assets. Now, the way you used to do this was to go into assets and import package and standard assets would be there. Now you can get it off of the asset store. So I'll just, uh, clicking this asset store tab, start uh, typing in standard and it's actually going to come up really quickly right here. We have the standard assets. And if you've never downloaded this before, it's going to say download right here. You'll click on that, wait for the whole process, and then it'll say import. Um, so I'm, I've already done the download, so you can just take care of that. Um, then anyway, I'll click import. And once that's finished importing, you'll see this window come up with a bunch of checkboxes on it. This allows you to choose which items from standard assets you want to bring in. So for example, uh, if I didn't want any of this audio uh, mixers here, I could just unselect that and now I'm not going to bring any of those in. But rather than uh, you know, dive through this and potentially have errors and re-import things, I'm just going to import all. Keep things simple. All right, and once you've gotten the standard assets imported, you may see a bunch of errors. Uh, don't worry about those. You can just clear those by with the console selected. Press the clear button, and they're gone. Uh, if something doesn't clear, then it's a real error. If it, if it disappears on clear, then it's generally something you don't need to care about. All right, so anyway, I'm back into this empty scene, and I got my main camera, directional light, and that's about it. Um, also, uh, one thing I'm just going to take, a couple things I'm just going to take care of right now is these gizmo icons always just annoy the heck out of me. They get in the way, prevent me from seeing where I'm placing things. So to get rid of those, uh, right here there's this gizmos text right here and a, and a arrow next to it. I can click on that and then just on this, where it says 3D icons right at the top, take the slider and just shrink it all the way down to nothing. Uh, next, let's create a terrain to uh, create a little basic world. So I'm going to start by going into Game Object, 3D Object, and Terrain. And this will create a terrain. And it's currently this checkerboard pattern because there's no uh, material actually applied to it. So let's start off by setting up this terrain. So I'm going to go with this terrain terrain selected in the hierarchy that allows me to see it over in the inspector over here. And I'm going to start by adding some terrain layers. So for that, I'll uh, just click on this little paintbrush, and then in this drop down here where it currently says paint texture, um, let's see, actually I can leave it there as paint texture. In the terrain layers, I click edit terrain layers and create a layer. And now I'm going to look here for something that looks like something that might be ground. Uh, and this is why I imported standard assets. Uh, if I actually go into here and click on that and go into environment, uh, terrain assets, surface textures, these are the, the things that I'm going to be putting into my terrain. So I'm going to go ahead and find those by hit terrain layers, create layer, 
and I'm going to look for some of those graphs. Ah, here we go. Grass Hills Albedo. Double click of that. And now I've just created a terrain layer. That's grass. And since this is the first layer I've created, it's just automatically applied that to my entire terrain. That's, that's fine, uh, but I'd like to have a little bit more variety and different types of terrain I can draw. So I'll create some more layers. So again, uh, edit terrain, create layer, and look for some of the other options. And I'm just going to go ahead and add all of them. So here's uh, Cliff Albedo. That's definitely one that I'd like to have. Let's add some more. I think there's about four or five in total that come with the standard assets. Uh, create, and let's see. Ah, here we go. Grass Rock. Create, and I think there's also Sand. Sand Albedo. Good. <clears throat> create, and if I remember correctly, there's one more. Yes, mud rocky albedo. Okay, so I have my five terrain layers. These all came with standard assets. If you go onto the asset store and search for um, terrain textures or ground textures, you'll find all sorts of different varieties of textures that you can bring in. Now, what that allows me to do is I can, with this paint texture selected, I can click on one of these layers it's in here. And let's say I want to go with uh, sand, for example. And I have this circle around right where my mouse is. And if I click and drag, you see that the ground turns into sand. Likewise, if I take, uh, say, this rocky thing, then it turns to that rocky layer. And I can just draw uh, whatever I like in all of this space. As long, and if this goes away, it just reselect terrain. Now, I can change my brush in a number of ways. Uh, first, I can change my brush size, make that, say, a little bigger. And now I can draw more area faster. Like if I want to make this entire terrain sandy, which I think I would like, actually. Just uh, select the sand, max out the brush size. And then also there's this opacity. So one thing you may notice, if I uh, zoom in so I can I'm uh, scrolling the middle mouse wheel to zoom in, by the way. If I just, like, click really quickly, I'll uh, bring down my brush size. I'm only making things slightly sandier, a little bit at a time. I have to, like, click several times or click and hold to get a full sand effect. And that's because of this opacity. If I turn this all the way up to 100, then it gets pure sand as soon as I click there. Uh, so this lower opacity is nice if you want to kind of have a subtle effect uh, where you're blending between multiple different textures. Um, but, but for now, I'm going to start by just making this entire terrain sand, uh, and then I'll make other things not sand, uh, just for the type of uh, game world I'm going for. So for that, I'll just max out my brush size and my opacity, and then just draw real quick move this around, and now, great. Now my entire texture is sand. I'll bring that down so I can see it better, and there we go. So now I have this nice sandy terrain, <clears throat> and I can make parts of it grassy as we go. Now, next thing is I'd like to start messing around with the height, because right now this is completely flat. That's, that's kind of boring. So to change the height uh, with this brush still selected, click this drop down, and I can start with using Raise or Lower Terrain. And uh, so if I click here, now it creates this big arch right there. If I click again, then it um, stacks them. Press Control z to get rid of that. Uh, now I can also use this opacity so that it happens a little slower. I can just click, and I create these little mountains and get rid of those. And uh, this kind of combination of using your lowing, using a low opacity and just clicking and dragging around is a good way to create some very quick uh, semi-realistic mountains. So if I just click and drag around a bunch, I'm starting to get a little bit of a kind of a mountain range here. If I take a 
like that. Now this is kind of sharp points edges right here, uh, whereas this, given the sort of texture I'm using, I think a sand dune would look better. So uh, for that, I can use this smooth height feature, and I'll uh, increase my brush size and my opacity, and just sweep that over it. I'm clicking and dragging. And uh, now, if I zoom in on this, it's now a more, much more gentle kind of slope. It's more, it's more like a, a large sand dune that's all rounded, and you don't see all the little lines from all the different types that raise the height a little bit at a time. Now, one thing that's kind of, uh, well, actually, first I'll also show on this um, raise or lower terrain, if I have my brush size up, and I'm going to bring down my opacity a little bit, if parts of this are too high, I can hold shift and click and drag, and I can cut into my terrain, bring the capacity, opacity down a little further, uh, and then that has a kind of a lowering effect on my terrain. Now, one thing that's really obnoxious that you may notice pretty quick is that if I try to lower some of the things that I haven't raised, there's a lower limit to where I can uh, adjust my terrain. And so that's kind of a pain if, say, you're uh, going along and you're creating mountains, and then, say, you want to create a river that cuts down below the normal height, you'll find that you can't. And in order to get that river, you have to raise up the area around it. But if you'd already been working on your terrain for a long time and the rest of the terrain was exactly the height that you wanted and you already had a bunch of objects on it, uh, th that can be a real nuisance. So one thing that I like to do uh, right off the bat uh, is to just raise everything up to a fairly high, like middling height. And that way I can raise and lower uh, anywhere that I like. So for that, I'm going to click this drop down and go into set height. And you'll see there's a slider here. This actually also explains why you can't lower uh, below the this, this starting point, is because there's a range to how high terrain can be. It can go all the way from 0 to 600. 600 is the maximum it can be, and 0 is the minimum that terrain can be. And by default, terrain starts at 0. Just to set things in the middle where I have maximum freedom to raise or lower, I'm going to go set, set this number here on height to 300, and so with, with set height selected again. And then I'm going to max out my brush size so I can, because I'm just doing this to the entire terrain very quickly, and I'm also going to max out my opacity to make this as fast as possible. All right, so I have this giant brush, maximum opacity, and I click, and I just hold until it stops rising. Okay. Oh, wait. Actually, it's 300. It's quite a long ways. Okay, so you can see here, uh, after I've clicked on this for a while, this, this area right here isn't rising anymore. That's because it's reached 300. And set, so razor lower terrain raises if you click without shift pressed and lowers if you click with shift pressed set height just goes to this height. So if the train is currently above, it'll go down. If the train is currently below, it'll go up. And actually, honestly, I, I like using set height pretty much all the time. Um, so, all right, set height, make sure this is 300, and just start drawing. So just to spend a moment and get everything up to 300, including the edges. And if you see some weird shadow lines, uh, don't worry about that. That's that's just the lighting, uh, light baking, not keeping up with our scene changes. That'll it'll fix itself over time. Okay, raise that up. Raise this up over here. And great, that I think that pretty much gets it. Uh, so I just chose a middle 
of 300. If you believe that your terrain design is going to have some mountains that go higher than 300 from your, your base point, and not very much is going to go lower, then you can kind of set then you can set your middle from 100 or 200 or or whatever you like, and you'll still have that freedom. You'll just have more freedom upwards than downwards. However, I at this point don't know whether my game is going to be mostly valleys or mountains, so I'm using that 300 as a middle. Now, I'm actually going to use, since I went to all this work of getting things higher up so that I could lower below a standard height, I'm going to make use of that by creating a river cutting through this. So leaving this at set height, I'm going to change my height here to, let's say, 290. And so that means I'm going to be cutting a river through this, and it's going to be 10 lower than the space around it, because 300 is what I'm using as my base, 290 is what I set this to now. I'm going to bring down my opacity so that I have can make things have a little bit more control over what happens, and also shrink my brush size. We'll zoom in, and I'm just going to cut a river through this terrain, and I clicked outside of the terrain, that's why that happened. And so now as I just click and drag around, then I cut into my terrain. And because this opacity is set low, it doesn't just go down to that height immediately. It happens slowly. So I can have these kind of uh, ridges automatically. And let's see, cut some over there. Maybe have it splinter off a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time on this. I just want to cut a river through the whole place, maybe make a little bit of a lake over there, and cut this through. That seems good enough for now. Um, also, if you like, uh, you can smooth out some of these ridges, again, with the smooth height, and just go over this click and drag and smooth out these edges. Uh, or you could leave them sharp. And actually I kind of I kind of like this, just these some of these sharp edges. All right, so now I have the river cut out in terms of my terrain, but there's no actual water in here. So that's what I'm going to address now. And if I look into my standard assets environment water we have a bunch of different water prefabs. Uh, if you yeah, look in prefabs for this water, uh, there's also some under water four. I think the one that I kind of like the look of the best is this water four advanced. So I'm going to bring that into my scene. And you can see this is what it looks like. Now it's way below my uh, terrain, so I'm going to raise this up a little bit, uh, up to 300. Double click so I can see it. Okay, so now it's level with my terrain. And now, and actually, I'm going to lower it a little bit below 300 because 300 is, is this base height. So let's say if I uh, put it at um, 295 and bring it over, I can now see that water is appears to be filling my river uh, but with a little bit of a slope before you get to it which is just the effect that i want now the next thing is i want this water to fill this entire area now i could do that by duplicating this water tile and just placing it around wherever it's needed uh, but i'm trying to keep things going a little bit quicker so uh, instead i'm just going to increase the scale and make this uh, ten, um, 10 by 10 by 10. And it's completely off-centered, so I'm going to just move this x and y coordinate. Uh, so I think uh, 150? Let's go with 250 by 250. Not quite enough. 500 by 500. Ah, yes, that's that's what I need to set its positions to 500 by 500 because this terrain uh, if I look and click on my terrain and click this gear icon yeah you can see in this mesh resolution I have my terrain width and height set to 1000 by 1000 so that's that 
total length all the way across. Um, and yeah, 600 here, this is what sets that maximum height that I could go to. So if you wanted a bigger terrain uh, or a larger maximum height, or if you wanted it smaller, you could just change these values in here. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to bother with that right now. Looking back at this water, it, something about it looks really strange. Um, it's kind of all over, like it's popping out in a lot of places, and it's kind of going all over the place in here. You can see that even more clearly if I bring my camera uh, up into the scene. So let's see if I uh, get my main camera and bring this somewhere where I can see the world. Let's see, bring it in like that, a little more. Here's my little camera preview. And I'm going to rotate this downwards by clicking this rotate and moving it along there. And so now if I run the game, it's going to put me where the camera is. And you can see this, this water looks really strange. And the reason for that is because this particular water prefab has waves built in, which is really nice, except that I've increased the scale by 10. So now the waves are 10 times bigger than they should be, and which is actually larger than the lake bed. So to fix that, I can just go into my water advanced. Uh, of course, the other thing is I could have copied the tiles so that they stayed the same height. But I'm going along with just uh, using the scale because that actually shows us some interesting things. In my water for advanced, if I scroll down to the bottom, if you look at for this Gerster dis uh, displace, and this is where I can modify a lot of the properties for how my water moves around dynamically. And the particular one that I want to change is amplitude. So this was built with a certain preset numbers that the developer thought were pretty good. I've increased the scale by 10, so basically I just want to decrease these by a factor of 10, and they should look about the same as it did before. So I'll just go ahead and put a zero next to, after the decimal point in each of these numbers. And now, save that, run the scene, and the water looks a lot more natural. It's, it's got some nice wave effects that, that look really nice, but they're not going crazy and jumping like out of the river and uh, breaking the immersion. Okay, so next thing, now that I have some water in my scene, I'm not really expecting this to look like all pure desert anymore. Uh, I'd like to have some like grassiness next to the water. So for that, I'm going to go back to my terrain, click paint, and use the paint texture option. Click my grass, and let's see, actually I think that works pretty well. I'm going to turn up the opacity some and just start drawing some grass along my river. I'll increase this brush size some more. Not quite that much. Yeah, there we go. And all right, so that create a nice grassy region. It's kind of like this terrain's a is like a little bit of an oasis that I have going on here. Okay, now this is a really sharp cutoff, and I, that's because I was using that high opacity so that I could draw quickly. I'd like it to kind of fade into sand as I move away. So for that, simply just bring down that opacity to a nice low number, like around five or so. And now I can just draw around and sweep back and forth to create a gradual fade from that desert look to a grassy appearance. Okay. And I'm not making this look fantastic just now. Um, you feel free to spend some more time with it. I, you know, zoom in, use a smaller brush stroke, uh, even lower opacity. Just take it a little bit slower, and your results will be better. 
but I just just for introducing the concepts, I think this is good enough. Uh, one thing also to know about is you can also change the type of brush you're using. Actually, this would be a pretty good one uh, for what we're attempting right now. Is this kind of builds in some fade around around, around the outside automatically. Uh, so actually, if I take a look and draw it over here, for example. So if I just take this brush and click a little bit, you'll see it uh, is used the most at the center and less as I go outward. So this is a ver very nice brush if you want to have subtle effects. Some of these other uh, crazy looking brushes are also pretty good uh, for uh, that a fade effect, where you can just kind of use this and click around a bunch and it'll look like little grassy patches um, appearing all over the place. Uh, so that the fade off is a little more natural looking. So if I take a look and zoom in here. Yeah, it doesn't just fade suddenly from grass to sand, but it's first, you know, fades a little bit. There's a barrier that's kind of soft, and then it, the grass still continues to appear in patches becoming less and less frequent as I move away from the river. And feel free to exper with, experiment, of course, with some of these other brushes as well. Okay, so now I have my river and grass. Next, I'd like to add a couple of trees. So for that, I'm going to go into this, back into my, you know, with the terrain selected, and click on this icon that kind of looks like trees. And before I can paint trees, I need to add some trees for that that the terrain can know about. So first I'll click Edit Trees and Add Tree. And now I need to find a tree prefab. And the standard assets has come with three. Uh, it's, I think, a broadleaf, a conifer, and a palm tree. So I'm going to just find all of those so that I have the option of using them, whether I bring them into the scene or not. So I when I click on this little circle, it brings up the select game object, and I'll start with this broad leaf. Double click on that, and then click add. And now broad leaf shows up here. And before I add these, though, I'm just going to add some more trees. So edit, add tree, and just look through here for more trees. Uh, there's a conifer, add that, and then finally, I'm going to look for the palm tree. Palm desktop, perfect, and add. Okay, now to actually place some of these trees in the scene, uh, you just have whichever tree you want selected. See, it's in blue right there, and then you just click where you want to place some trees. There, I've just placed a whole bunch of uh, palms right there, but that's really thick on the palms. I don't think I want quite that many, so I'm going to press uh, Control z get rid of those. And I'm going to bring down the tree density. Make that nice and like low, something like there. Now I click somewhere, and now there's much fewer, fewer of them show up with each cl click. One thing to be aware of when painting trees is do not just click and drag around. You'll get just massive amounts of trees whenever you do that, regardless of how you set your tree density. I mention that because that click and drag often works very well for painting textures, not so much for trees. For these, you just want to click. Now, if I want a little bit more variation in my palm trees, uh, I can modify this tree height by clicking and dragging this slider out here. Now, if I start adding palm trees, zoom a lot faster if you have, the tr if you have a large object like the terrain selected, then your camera is much more sensitive. So now over here, you can see there's a pretty big difference between the largest palm trees and the smallest palm trees. Whereas on the other side, they're much closer to being uniform uh, because this was set differently. You can also change the average height by moving the entire thing. I'm going to narrow that down a little bit again and just add some more palm trees to the rest of the area. Occasionally, you'll get some trees like this one over here that isn't where you want it. To delete, just with this uh, paint tool selected, hold down shift and click, and anything inside that region is gone. Uh, so that's also one way you can get, um, be a little bit more precise in your placement, is just by drawing all over the place 
and then taking getting like a super small brush size and just uh, or maybe a little bigger than that and then just deleting some here and there um, to make it look like you were being more precise when you were drawing them in the first place no one will ever know okay all right so now I have a nice scene over here with my palm trees and a river going through. Um, I think I'd also like to add a mountain over in this region. So again, for that, I uh, just go back into my paintbrush, set height, and so 300 was my base. I'm going to go up to 350, and that is going to look really weird. So no, I want this, uh, actually I'm going to use this one again, my standard brush and just draw around, keeping a nice low uh, opacity and maybe a little bit of a smaller brush size. Draw around, kind of create a mountain range. Let's go a little faster. And cut off some areas. And I'm going to have one little spot and anchor around over here that's a nice kind of like a plateau. Maybe over this, from this side. Yeah. So again, because I was using that set height, once I reach that height, then it stops increasing. So that creates this little flat area that I've made over there. And I'll add a little bit more height so that I reach it gradually. Next, I'm going to create a path that goes over to this plateau so that it's reachable. Uh, first thing, I want to make it clearly visible by taking a different type of brush. So I'll take a paint texture, and I think I'll make use this one here. Um, just. None of these really look perfectly like a path, but it'll be something different from the sand. And keep the opacity up a little bit, shrink down the brush size. And now I can just draw a path along this ridge. This is going to be something that later on the player can follow, and there may be like a quest or something over here. drag this out all the way maybe even into like this region and then the path will just kind of um, disappear so I'll just bring down that opacity I'll switch over to this brush turn up the brush size actually I want to use uh, this one okay then the similar this over here all right so that the path ends a little less abruptly I just use this fade out shadow and so now I have a little bit more of a natural looking path and then finally so that the path isn't quite so lumpy I can just use this smooth height max out the opacity, shrink down the brush size so it's about the same size of the path. Uh, I'll go with 10, actually 15, or 20. There we go. And now as I apply this smoothing figure over here along the path, it'll still be very lumpy where there isn't a path, but much more smoothed out where there is just as a way of clearly describing to the player where they where they are able to go and making it look a little bit more inviting. Okay, and now one other thing I can uh, add here, just adding a little bit more just giving you some more ideas for bits of polish you can add to your scene. 
uh, where there are these ridges, I think I'll uh, just put a little bit of a rocky texture and go back to this right here, shrink down the opacity and keep that brush size even, even smaller, like five. And now I can uh, just put that along some of these sharper ridges and make them like a, a rocky slope. Like that. Just as a way of making this terrain look a little bit more realistic. Okay, well, you could spend all day with this sort of thing, but hopefully you get the idea of just some of your options that you have for messing around with with terrains, giving them vegetation. Uh, you can like mix in different trees if you wanted, or have different uh, bi uh, biomes that have different types of trees in them. You can mess around with, with heights and create areas that look in trails and other things that invite the player to explore particular regions where you want to go. Uh, you can add water and set it at a particular height so that any train that goes below that height uh, goes through the water. You can mess around with water parameters to make it more or less wavy, and just all kinds of things that you can do with the terrain to make it as detailed as you want it to be. Now, if you want to save a huge amount of time and your terrain is basically just static like this, uh, and you're not trying to create a very specific level, there is something on the Asset Store if you look up uh, Gaia. If you look up uh, Gaia on the Unity Asset Store, uh, this is something, this is a very popular asset that you can use to create terrain procedurally and be able to make something that looks very realistic very quickly with just a few keystrokes and setting some parameters. There's a lot of flexibility you can get into it, like make any sort of terrain that you want to make. Uh, however, you're, and, and then, you know, after that, you can then modify it by hand a little bit to personalize things a little bit more. However, that is not a free asset, uh, and I have no association with the creator of it. So I think it's useful, and even if you are going to use Gaia, I think it is useful to at least know a little bit about how terrains are created normally uh, so that you can find other time-saving techniques to uh, refine your process from there. But actually, even with just the very free things that are built into Unity, there's quite a lot you can do with it. So that is all for this lesson. Uh, stay tuned for next time where we will be creating a character controller that can run around and navigate in the scene. Uh, until then, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.